I'm currently working with the scene of an armchair that I've previously staged and adjusted. To get started, I'm going to assign a material option from the real cloth folder in the materials library by dragging and dropping it onto a surface that I'd like to apply it to. It's important to note here that to achieve the highest level of success when mapping real cloth, you should ensure that your model has been UV unwrapped prior to mapping your material, or you may experience unexpected seam lines and or patchiness. You'll notice that with the new material, the weave scale has changed. In this example, the scale is still believable at its current size, but in some instances, this might not be the case. To make adjustments and customize your newly applied real cloth material, there are two options. We can either work from the property subtab in the project window, or we can work from the material graph. In either location, you'll be able to easily and intuitively customize the appearance of your assigned real cloth material. For this model, I'm going to start by adjusting my weave scale to better replicate the type of textile I'd like to mimic. I can do that by entering the mapping accordion in the property subtab. Here I can decide what mode I'm going to use to map my material, as well as the scale at which my material will be mapped. Notice under scale modes that I have two options. If I hover over each, a tooltip will pop up to describe the purpose of each option. The units option uses the scene units as reference when mapping scale, while UV relates the scale mapping to the units assigned in your modeling software. If you experience discrepancies or any issues with mapping when using the UV option, stick with the units option instead. In my workflow, I typically stick with the units option from the get-go for simplicity's sake. I can then make my desired adjustments within the property subtab and execute geometry notes. If your pattern is using the flyaway fiber function, be sure to execute your geometry notes or your pattern geometry will not be correctly updated. Now that my weave is set up, I'd like to further adjust my threads by opening the warp and weft accordions. You'll notice several adjustment options from refractivity to roughness. All users of Keyshot have access to adjustments through here or the material graph. These locations are also where you would adjust each respective thread color. For those unfamiliar with warp and weft, warp pertains to vertical threading while weft relates to horizontal threading. I'm going to quickly change my thread colors to something that matches my vision a little bit better. Then I'm going to execute my geometry nodes to make sure that the material is updated correctly. A little tip here, if your thread color is not appearing as deep as you would like, try changing the specular to a color closer to the assigned thread color. Be careful about going too dark or the realism of the material will be affected. If you're a user of Keyshot Pro, you can further make adjustments using the Edit Weave Pattern function. If I open up the window, you'll notice there are a few more options available for editing the weave pattern. I can select from two types of thread options for each thread direction, as well as customize thread widths. Two awesome features in this window are the ability to select from different pattern presets from the drop down at the top right of the window, as well as the ability to control how threads overlap by interacting with the weave graphic in the center of the window. With these, you can really tailor how the weave appears for your specific applications. Again. After making your adjustments, be sure to execute your geometry nodes to ensure your material updates accurately to your adjustments. So I'm really liking the way this armchair is coming together. I already have the back material set the way I'd like it, and the material I've been editing is close to my desired appearance, but has a little too much fuzz. My goal is to have the back of the chair look somewhat like a heathered wool material, with the seat and chair back surfaces appearing tighter and a little less fuzz. I can easily adjust these under the geometry accordion. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust some of the different parameters here to values that I feel will better represent the material I'm after. In this case, I'll adjust my density, length, and length variation, and then I'll execute geometry nodes. Now you can see that my material feels tighter and better represents my end goal. At this point, I can let my image res up to get a preview of what my final render will look like. 
I can also render out a region of my image to get a more accurate depiction of the end product. This would also be a great time to look out for any strange patterning effects occurring in your material. Sometimes due to focal distance and type of weave pattern, you may experience what appears to be a grid or mesh interference pattern that doesn't belong in your image. These are called moiré patterns. To combat these from being present, you can simply increase anti-aliasing and that should solve your problem. Once you've decided that everything in your scene is copacetic, you can render out your real cloth image and see your realistic woven material at work.